and today we'll be working on the. I、uh, will be continue talking about the chapter five, and this time we are going to start on a new strand called digital citizenship. Digital citizenship, I believe we have definitely heard it like many many times, but um, we are going to talk about it again in the ICGS form. What does it mean? It represents the appropriate behavior that represents reasonable, ethical, and legal approach that the individual takes in any situation with respect to the use of I I T. It ties very closely to the policy, means what you should do on a、uh, on the internet. So digital citizenship is a regulation of what you should do. What you should do. It is belonging to a part of social and ethical considerations. So, for example, if I'm surfing on the internet, and something that I can't do is I can't hack the system, because if I hack the system, it's illegal. So this is a legal approach of the legal、uh, perspective of the digital citizenship. Another thing that I can't do, let's say I can't do, is I can't.、Um, Yeah, I I can't create it. I I can't like, uh, promote illegal spe behavior, illegal speeches, or or racism speeches. Let's say like, or a race is very bad or something because that's not ethical, and it violates with the social, uh, social rights and responsibilities. So considering that, you will know that digital citizenship is something that regulates what people should do. Four hours of online safety. This is not really tested, but、um, you can reference it when you are answering paper one. So it represents respect, responsibility, reasoning, and resilience. Acceptable use policy. This one, remember, this one is commonly tested in the ITGS paper paper one. For example, we're asking you define what an acceptable use policy is and some of the advantages and disadvantages. So, what is acceptable use policy? It is a document that is presented in every school district around the country. The purpose is to provide safe parameters for exploring digital resources and using school-issued devices properly. Also, ensures that schools do their best to block out the darkest corners of the web. With those policies are effective and required, they are not involved in the semantics. So, for example,、uh, there are various policies that. Um, that you have to follow when you are assessing digital resources. For example, you can't like download a malware software into your school's、uh, desktop, and you claim that it is, it is it it and and you put it on the desktop and just wait the virus to leak into school computers. You can't do that. I don't know whether doing that is illegal or not, but it definitely violates the step of use of policy. First, first of all. So this means that acceptable use policy is something we definitely should follow because it is,、um, it provides safe parameters and along digital resources and it pro protects the internet safety. Now let's talk about nine elements of digital citizenship. Those nine digital citizenship are something that we definitely should uh. Should like you definitely should remember like they won't test it directly asking you the definition of digital access or something, but the thing is that you have to memorize them in order to use them in paper one or paper two. Let's first talk about this digital access. It's the equitable distribution of technology. Uh, what does it mean? So basically, it means that um everyone has access to specific devices. Another sentence that we can call it is called. Equality of access, or simply accessibility. Let's make an example. For example, let's say in the age of COVID, the teacher forced the the school asks everyone to have classes on Zoom. But in order to up、uh, to get Zoom, you would have to use、uh, computers. For some students, um, they do not have they do not have computers. You may ask, like, why don't they go to libraries? Um. 
in Canada and in United States, those rich countries, those first world countries, we definitely have computer libraries with computers, right? So you may think that every country works like that. But if we go to some like other countries that require Zoom, like other countries with schools that requires uh, Zoom to assess, uh, sorry, if you go to other countries that requires Zoom, I mean, if you go to other countries with schools that requires every student to take their courses on Zoom, then it does not work. For example, let's say Mexico. Some of the southern Mac, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to make another country. Let's say, uh, uh, let me think. Some like not rich Central American country. Costa Rica or Jamaica, let's say in those countries, if they may not have those public libraries or something that allows every citizen to go to, I mean, they do not have those resources that allows every citizen to access the uh, computers and the internet. Right. So in this case, those countries, students in those countries may have a distribution of technology problem because they can't access the internet. Uh, sorry, they can't access a like IT device that allows them to surf on the internet and use internet materials such as Zoom. They can't. So that when we talk about digital access, a way, so a way of them is that to pro so if you have to like write down the solution for the digital assess. Then one possible method of uh, solving the accessibility is to get to build public services, such as like libraries that has computers for everyone to assess. But it's not limited to computers. I'm just making an example. There are also other methods, and it is not on. And the restriction is not only limited to, like computers in, um, com the sets of computers and library providing access. There are also other digital access concerns, but that would depend on the specific case. The second one is digital commerce, electronic buying and selling of goods, and focuses on the tools and safeguards in place to assist those bank buying, selling, banking, using, or using money in any way in digital space. So this way, basically, digital commerce is just use of internet to to perform um, market. Sorry, use of internet to buy and sell goods. In one sentence, use of man, use of internet to buy buy and sell goods. So, for example, let's say Amazon. It is a platform of digital commerce. You go to Amazon, you search like newest computer, and you find one like ten, a hundred, a thousand, a million, a million dollar computer. You click it and you buy it. So now let's talk about what are some of the like concerns of the digital commerce. Hmm. Think about this. What are some concerns? One concern may be hack privacy, right? So when you are doing digital commerce, you have your personal information stored on the platform of digital commerce. For example, if you want to buy a computer, you have to enter your uh, you have to enter your your information of your bank account. Let's say, for example. And that includes your address and your name or something. Those things are stored in a database. And for specific information about the database, I will not talk about it now. It's in chapter seven. But basically, database is just something. Uh, uh, it's just a platform where you store all your data into a i uh, into an online IT file into an IT file. The store of Personal data into a file. So, um, the data might get leaked because, for example, hackers may hack it. That's hacking is one of them. The companies they have access to those data, they can also sell it. That's also a possibility. 
and the third possibility it comes from、um, companies. It comes from you accidentally leaking it to like someone else. Let's say, for example, when you are、uh, sell, when you are let's say purchasing, someone, some people near you just go through your computer and they just see your banking information or something. Those are the three possible ways for like privacy leaking. And what are the and think about this? What is the consequence of pri-、uh, like your privacy getting leaked? Um. Highly depends on the information that you that got leaked. For some more confidential information, such as your、uh, personal ID or like your bank CVC or something, if those gets leaked, then the hackers basically can use those information to、um, to perform identity fraud. Basically, they take the money,、uh, let's say in the bank account case. They take, uh, they use the CVC. They go to a bank. They they use your CVC and they perform like withdrawal or transaction, and they takes away all your money. This is an example of, let's say, it actually causes financial loss to you. Okay, financial loss to you. And another case is that it does not cause any like loss, but it makes yourself. How should I say it? But it makes yourself feel like. But it causes pri- possible security damage. For example, your address. Let's say I live in, let's say one two three four, one two three four YouTube Street. I live in there, and I don't tell others that. And one day this information gets leaked. I don't know how it gets leaked, but someone, someone I don't know, knows this information. Okay, there's someone called like North America Mass Contacts. Go, go, go! He lives in one, two, three, four YouTube streets. What, what will he do? One thing he might do is like at three o'clock when you are sleeping, he just like stab. He just break my door and coming saying, "Okay, North America Mass Contacts, go, go, go! Give me five thousand dollars something, or else I will, or or else I will censored." You know, this sentence I I cannot say it because if I say it, it will get banned. But basically, this is also like a security concern would happen in this case. Um, and the third case is just it. Uh, the third case that it makes you feel intimidating, like it doesn't cause any security or financial damage, but it just makes you feel self intimidating. For example, for example, uh, let's say I write down my, I I write a. You know that the YouTube has、uh, sorry. You know that the Instagram recently has the notes function. How should I say it? Uh, yeah, leave a note. It basically allow you to uh write a personal note, like write write uh one hundred and forty word, one hundred and forty character note to your friends, to people you uh that follows you, to people that follows you. So for example, let's say. Um, I eat a. Let's say I admit that I eat a pear. So I eat an orange, and I find that there is one gram of gold in the orange. What it happens is that someone actually know it. Someone leaks to the public. Okay, there's someone called North America Master. Let's call this go go go. He eats his orange, and he has one. He got one gram of gold inside the orange. Guess what will happen? Uh, well, nothing will happen. It just Everyone knows your secret, and it will be very, like, intimidating. But there's actually no financial damage. But in this case, it might be security damage. Like people know all know you have gold, so they want to like grab get the gold from you. That's also a possibility. But let's just trust in police, Canadian. Okay, we we can't trust them. First of all, we can't trust Canadian or American police, but. Let's just trust like how Canadian and Americans are civilized. Let's <laughs> just trust it. Okay, jokes aside, let's talk about the third one: digital communication of co- co- collaboration, electronic exchange of information. That's easy. Basically, um, it's just uh, you use electronic system to give other 
information or texts, which is called digital communication. It could be as simple as you text your friend, like, uh, "How is your day?" or something. The main possible issue is still a bit similar to the previous one: privacy, privacy. Okay, it's it's privacy. So, like, your communication history got leaked by others. Oh, and also another one, another one: censorship. In communication, censorship in communication. So, for example, governments usually perform censorship, um, because, like they because of a variety of reasons. One of them that they want to hide the thing they don't want to want to know. Sorry, they don't want us to know. And another possibility that comes from they want to ban the, let's say the inappropriate materials. So the communication, the digital communication, one concern of it is that some communication may be censored by the government, um, and those censorship and and if those information are inappropriate, your account will result in some consequences that it it being banned. This is also a concern censorship, but we are not going going to talk about censorship for now. You you only need to know that censorship is. Like bans ban an inter ban an information an information that got banned, like ban like a、uh, authority ban a specific type of information. This is the definition of censorship. An authority ban a specific type of information. This is all you need to know now. Ah,、uh, for censorship, it should be I remember it should be in strand two. I will talk to about that to I think in a few a few videos later. The fourth one, digital etiquette, electronic standards or conducts or procedure, and has to do with the process of thinking about others when using digital devices. In one sentence, policy. Have I talked? Have I talked about policy to you? I think so. I I think so. I have talked about policy to you. Policy basically is just rules or regulations that government that you have to follow. This will be similar to the digital etiquette. The fifth one, digital fluency, processing of understanding technology and its use. This one is simple. Dig a high digital literacy meaning you understand how your computer works. Like when you see your computer, you don't just consider it as a chocolate and you eat it. As <laughs> a chocolate, but sometimes it's more complex. It's more understanding about your responsibility, your responsibility when using the IT system. Such as you don't use your computer to perform illegal behaviors. The sixth one: digital health and welfare, physical and psychological well-being. A digital world. Um, we can interpret it from two perspectives. One of them is that is like, is your health is the healthy use of digital system. For example, if you play computer for only two hours a day. Uh, that that's not possible for IB students. First of all, I have to say, this is not possible for IB students. But first of all, uh, you play computers for two hours a day. Then it's we consider it as being physical. It is as a healthy use of an IT of a digital system. However, if you play a computer for twenty hours per day, then definitely not healthy use. But I think it depends on people's perspective. Do it? Does it? No. No, to be honest, not not really. Um. So, in this case, digital health would be the health use or healthy use of the digital system. However, another thing would be also be on policy, where where it is about how you behave yourself on internet. Another thing about digital health would be how you behave yourself on internet. For example, if you if like when you go on Instagram, all thing you do is just criticizing everyone very harsh. Let's say when you see me filming the North American mess, can let's go go. You just call me like a a bunch of shit. That is the disgrace to society. Then, then like, if you only do that to me, that's fine. That be that might be because like my video content is very bad. But if you do that to everyone, then it would be I would say it's a unpsychological well use of 
the IT system. Okay, that would be unphysical. Like, it would be not. It would not be a good digital health and welfare. The seventh one, digital law, electronic responsibility for actions. This one basically means that you follow the local law while using the digital system. In one sentence, you follow the digital. You follow the law. You follow the local law when using digital system. Let's think about this. What are some examples that you you violate laws? Uh, like what are some examples where you violate the local law when using a digital system? Uh, some of the example. For example, you hack into a system and you add, delete, manipulate, or merge inf uh, information in a database. For example, um, let's say you have completed the IB exam. And you find that your score is very bad. You only get four points. So you hack on the IB sites, and you change it from four points to forty points. In this case, it would be a how should I say it? In this case, it would be a bad digital law. Okay. Let's talk about digital rights and responsibility. Eighth one, it is freedoms extended to everyone in a digital world. So. It refers to what you can do in a digital system, and the next one is going to be digital private security and privacy. So for those nine digital citizenship, um, the main thing that you need to guarantee is that you have to, um, you have to be sure that you are able to use them. Use them. You are able to use them like when you need it, like use it at the correct location. Just be sure you are very familiar with those nine elements because I'm sure you definitely need to write them on paper one and paper two. You definitely need to write them. Okay. So I think now it comes to the end of our filming, and I hope you have learned a lot. See you next week. Bye bye.